Hello everyone, our today's lesson is about enlightenment in Azerbaijan literature. So we have two contents that um, we will talk about today. Azerbaijan enlightenment in 19th century, Mirza Fateli Ahundov as a founder of enlightened realism and his literary activities. So it's our first topic and the second one is about the main themes of Ahundov's comedies. So, let's start with uh, Enlightenment in Azerbaijan literature. We have uh, four main contents here um, concerning this uh, topic. So, the first one is about historical situation in that period. If you want to understand Ahundov's plays and, um, and also all the literary works, you should know about that period of Azerbaijan history. And um, the other one that you should know, it was about the good and bad results of the split of Azerbaijan. And also we have the other content about cultural nationalism. And we'll talk about main representatives of enlightenment, but, but we will draw Mirza Fatih Ahundo for the first place. So the first one, historical situation in that period. So we wrote here two treaties uh, which were playing main role in Azerbaijan history. Um, it was um, about new borders, new ideas and uh, such kind of things um, helped Azerbaijan to create his own culture and to start new movement called Enlightenment. So the 19th century was a time of radical social and political change in Azerbaijan. The Russian in Empire and next and uh, northern Azerbaijan, including the present day Azerbaijan Republic, and this was formalized in two treaties between Russia and Persia. The first one was about uh, the treaties of Treaty of Gulistan, which was signed in 1813, and the second one, Turkmenchai, which was signed in 1828. So, uh, after that period, Azerbaijan um, was divided um, between these two, um, two states, Russia and Persia. And uh, the bad results uh, were that uh, the split caused immense social upheaval and was in many ways a tragedy for the people because the people, the local people were obliged to leave their homelands and it was uh, really a tragedy for that people. Uh, but the, at the same time, um, it uh, it opened new doors to the culture and ideas of Russia, Europe and generally the West. And uh, also we have cultural nationalism, so we should talk about this term. Um, Azerbaijani nationalism initially manifested uh, itself as a cultural movement beginning in the second half of the 19th century. At this time, Azerbaijan was a province of uh, Russia, which executed a policy of open Russification, discrimination and oppression of national minorities. This experience shaped Azerbaijani nationalism as a struggle of the Azerbaijan people for national and cultural independence. So such prominent Azerbaijan artists, writers and philosophers like Jalil Mamad Gulzade, Hassan Bay uh, Zardabi, Mirza Alef Sabir, um, Najaf Bay Vazirov uh, constituted the foundation of this cultural movement. Drawing on Mirza Fateli Ahundo, they criticized the ignorance and religious uh, fanaticism impeding greater progress and blamed Russia for the national policy which they viewed as chauvinistic by nature. The activity of these intellectuals assumed a variety of forms. They opened national schools and a new teaching methodology and secular education they created. They worked to reform the language and especially on the alphabet with the goal of forming the Azerbaijan literary language based on a living popular language. They opened national libraries, new reading halls. They established charitable, cultural and public organizations that helped uh, Azerbaijan local students to study abroad and to develop uh, themselves. And also they opened new newspapers 
magazines and so on. So such kind of things, uh, of course, were playing main role in Azerbaijan culture and that were good sides of the splitting of Azerbaijan. Because it opened new doors, uh, new cultural doors. Uh, is it recording? Yes. Then, um, oh, sorry. So, and uh, main representatives of enlightenment. Uh, of course, we counted some names, some other representatives of enlightenment, but we should. Um, Emphasize Mirza Fatal Ahundov especially. He was a leader of Enlightenment movement and he founded Enlightened Realism. He was considered the first realist author and playwright in Azerbaijan and the first literary critic. He was the first writer to use a Western form in an Eastern poem and uh, his literary and public work now reached the spiritual development of the nation of Azerbaijan for more than 40 years. He earned renown as the outstanding theorist of the Enlightenment movement and a major public activist, not only in Azerbaijan but uh, also in the Near East as a whole. So he used the Russian scientific and cultural environment as a to bring the democratic air of Western spirituality and culture to Azerbaijani literature. It was through the Russian language that I could have read, uh, read a European classic authors such as Shakespeare, Voltaire, and Montesquieu, as well as Russian ones, including Griboyedov, Pushkin, and Gogol. So that's why uh, he. Uh, the, uh, such kind of plays, such kind of novels, books. Uh, played a main role for Ahundov to uh, develop himself and to open a new cultural movement for his own uh, his native literature and language and also social life. So. And. So we we should continue. The first European style realist plays in Azerbaijan and uh, the Near East. So as you see from this word, we um, from 1850 till 1855, during these five years, uh, Ahundov wrote uh, four, six comedies that were playing main role in his literary activity, and. Uh, he watched performances of Russian and European plays on the stage of the Russian theater and um, then wrote consecutively six comedies, these comedies, which were the first European style realist plays in Azerbaijan and the Near East, as we wrote here. In the space of five years, Akhundov wrote the tale of Mullah Ibrahim Khalil the Alchemist in 1850, then the tale of Mansur Jordan and uh, the botanist and Darvish Mastalisha in 1850, the same year, the tale of the beer that caught the bandit 1851, and the adventures of the wizard of the Khan of Lankaran in the same year. The Adventures of the Mean Knight of Hajigara in 1852 and the Tale of the Defense Lawyers in 1855. And um, main themes of Ahundov's comedies um, we have counted here. Of course, you can uh, you can widen this uh, list, but they are main topics, main themes of his comedies that to be enlightened with the help of science and education. So, science and education knowledge um, were playing main role in his uh, writings, in his comedies, and. Um, he wanted people, especially new generation, get enlightened uh, with studying abroad, and uh, they uh, they um, they criticized uh, to prevent uh, students um, um, 
how to say development for the future that's why he wanted to open new roads for a new generation to study abroad and to protect national and moral values it was also the other theme of his comedies to struggle with ignorance so uh, from the deceived um, stars or from Monsieur uh, Jordan the botanist and Dervish Mathesha from this comedy and other comedies you can easily see how um, he how he struggled uh, with ignorance with ignorant people uh, because um, he he wanted all the people and also the head of the government be well educated uh, clever wise and ten intelligent uh, but when he described ignorant people in his works. Uh, he criticized them with uh, biting laughter and uh, ir irony. To criticize aims of Islamic religion, uh, we will talk about his Islamic assaults, his philosophical opinions about this religion. Uh, but um, again, he was. Um, preventing to uh, rule um, to rule people's life according to religious rules uh, to criticize dishonest leaders from deceived um, stars you can easily see that he criticized the uh, leadership rules of Shah Abbas the first require the separation of religion and state so you know that it's the main uh, theme for enlightenment even from uh, the English enlightenment German enlightenment French enlightenment it, this idea comes from this uh, country's culture so uh, you can easily see from Daniel Defoe's Jonathan Swift's uh, books that uh, they uh, achieved to separate religion and state and also, Akundov um, uh, uh, just was af affected by these writers, and he also wanted to um, get the separation of religion and state. And his religious and philosophical thoughts. So I informed you uh, in the previous slide that we'll talk about his uh, religious thoughts. He was materialist. So he believed that the world uh, um, consists of materials, uh, but he couldn't accept the existence of God, and and he claimed that everything, uh, every creatures, uh, were existed by themselves. So not any other super um, uh, superpowers or uh, metaphysical powers uh, needed. Islamic rules made some barriers in the way of development. So he claimed that um, people believe in God, people accept the religion, Islamic religion, and they uh, limit their life, they limit their knowledge. Uh, if, they, um, to pr if they prevent to believe uh, in religions ignorantly, they can Im they can improve their brains. So he um, explained that the religion is the main barrier uh, in front of people's uh, development. There is no need to have any metaphysical power to be created, as we said before. And uh, he said that um, he he didn't believe in uh, the last day. He didn't believe in the life after death. So, um, uh, heaven or um, hell, he didn't believe in them. And he said that soul uh, is in the body, and if the body dies, the soul dies too. And it's like the wisdom in the brain. So, uh, it, from this thought, we can see that he was a materialist, and uh, he didn't accept the Islamic religion. And he didn't accept any uh, divine power, not just Islamic, any other religion. He couldn't, he didn't believe uh, and accept. Then, general views of his comedies. Mm. So we have here uh, four headings here. The comedies took their subjects from Azerbaijani life. Uh, when you read his comedies, you can. Um, encounter um, national soul of 
uh, that period of life. The action is set only in Azerbaijan, the, uh, some uh, different parts of Azerbaijan, and the types, characters, their way of uh, thinking, dressing, speaking are all national are all Azerbaijani. And the language of the comedies too is based on the language of the people. So uh, you can easily encounter with the daily language of that period of Azerbaijan people, not just academic language. And it's living natural speech. Um, of course, he used a uh, vagarism and some vulgar words uh, to express uh, that period of daily life, um, obviously. And the use of foreign character in his comedy. Let's talk about Mr. Jordan. He was a French botanist. Um, and why did Akundov describe him in his comedy? Akundov made most of most use of uh, Western characters in the tale of Mansur Jordan, the botanist, and Darvish Mastalisha, working on the basis of his own philosophical worldview and concept of Westernism in the comedy. Um, uh, Akundov targets uh, um, deceitful, ignorant. People. He uh, creates uh, the character of the French botanist Monsieur Jordan in opposition to the Darvish Mastalisha, who leads a life of swindling and sponging. Monsieur uh, Jordan is presented as a representative of the world of progress, science, enlightenment, and culture. Monsieur Jordan comes from developed bourgeois France, while Mastalisha comes from backward feudal Iran, Persia. Through uh, these two characters, Akundov creates a view of West and East in the 19th century. The representative of the West, M Monsieur Jordan, serves scientific progress, while the representative of the East, Darvish Mastalisha, serves a prejudice and scholasticism. And uh, let's talk about the deceived stars. Uh, it was written in 1857. Um, why I wrote their years? Uh, I, you know that I don't like to require exact years uh, that you should know it or not. You should know it uh, as a period. If you know that it's in the middle of the 19th century, it's late of 19th century, or it's early of 19th century, it's enough. Of course, uh, it's impossible to um, remember all the years, exact years. But just try to uh, remember the main period, exact period. Which period is it? It's the middle 90s. And The Deceived Stars is the most famous book by Akundov that um, uh, you all know about this book from your school time. So let's uh, talk about themes and analysis about, uh, of this book. So in 1857, Akundov published the novel uh, The Deceived Stars, the first piece of realist writing in Azerbaijani prose. Uh, the Deceived Stars, so it's not playwright as you see. The Deceived Stars is rich in biting irony and satire, and the ironic ending presents the civic differences between East and West with great skill. In the story, the complex, important work of the state uh, management is entrusted to the predictions of deceitful and um, uh, this is uh, seen as a sign of the backwardness of the East, where the main principle is not scientific and technological development, but the ideology of superstition. The author concludes uh, the novella with an ironic retort. Um, so, I swear to God, they are strange fools, this English tribe who almost began a war with such a dangerous nation. So these words is uh, telling. These words are told by um, Shah Abbas first. Uh, he was ignorant himself, but he treated other people and uh, Yusuf Saraj uh, as an ignorance, as an ignorant. And uh, the first um, theme of this book is ignorance. So, um, 
ignorance, superstition, and lack of knowledge. Of course, they are all connecting in one point, but the main theme is ignorance because Shah Abbas I and his um, and his soothsayer, uh, astrologer, uh, you can say both soothsayer and astrologer, uh, he said that um, people will um, invade your um, authority, so that's why you should um, you should um, how to say leave your um, palace for just for a while, and they chose uh, the simple civic p uh, person uh, from the local people. He was called uh, Yusuf uh, Saraj. Here we have the difference between these two. Uh, characters and um, the main theme was ignorance because people and the, uh, the head of the government believed that um, soothsayer uh, tells everything uh, correct so true uh, but they didn't use their logical mind and uh, because of that superstition they um, uh, the Shah Abbas one leaves uh, his authority and uh, for a while Yusuf Saraj just uh, governed uh, the state, the people. And of course he governed correctly, honestly, but people, um, people um, didn't like him because they were um, habited to live uh, under pressure and um, under the role of the um, government. But when they see Yusuf Saraj is so honest, uh, honorable person, they couldn't believe that it, it, it can happen to them. Uh, it can be real, uh, real of their life, and that's why they uh, arranged to. Uh, to how to say to make him leave uh, the authority and after a while um, Shah Abbas uh, came again to his authority and everything continues uh, as before so uh, here we have uh, I wrote about Akundov's own opinion about this uh, book because he had some interviews and uh, he uh, told his own uh, thoughts about uh, this book, why he wrote it. Uh, he says, I criticized Shah Abbas first here because he referred his willpower to the silly soothsayer's fairness and he ruled people's destiny with the soothsayer's fake news. He looked after free thinkers in order to string, strengthen uh, his own authority, his viziers Sardar Zaman Khan, Mustafi Mirza Yahya, Mirza Mahsun and Akhun Samad were proud of their harmful attitudes towards local people. So that's why he chose Yusuf Saraj from the civic people uh, to contrast with them. So uh, here these uh, people uh, were describing as a um, head of the government so uh, that the higher uh, level, higher class of the so social um, life. But Yusuf Saraj was the lower uh, class. But in this case, the lower class uh, was able to govern uh, the government correctly, but the higher class were, uh, was not able to do it. So the main contrast uh, between these two classes and were were, was describing by uh, the writer and it was of, of course the irony and the biting satire by Akunov. And here you can easily see the main differences between Shah Abbas I and Yusuf Saraj. Although he was Shah, so uh, head of the uh, government, and Yusuf Saraj, although was uh, mm, just a simple lawyer class uh, representative, uh, they have quite uh, uh, big differences between them. So Shah Abbas were, was narrow-minded because he believed in soothsayers' news. But Yusuf Saraj was open-minded that um, uh, 
uh, he could govern um, the authority uh, honestly. And Shah Abbas first uh, was selfish because he uh, saw just himself and he wanted to escape himself from that um, uh, situation. But Yusuf Saraj was so humanist and he make some new rules, new laws for um, for just people's profit, not his own profit. And uh, Shah Abbas uh, were, was not a re uh, responsible leader uh, because he almost did nothing for uh, humans, for people, local people. But Yusuf Saraj was a responsible leader, so um, uh, he accepted uh, main rules, main uh, rights for uh, human life. And uh, Akhundov's role in alphabet reform. Uh, Mirza Fateli Akhundov sought ways to achieve progress and develop culture following the example of Russia and countries of Western Europe. Key to this, uh, in this view, was education of the masses. He saw that such a major uh, undertaking required, first of all, changes to the Arabic alphabet, which was used at the time to write Azerbaijan, Turkish, and Persian. So uh, we have here three headings, the force of changing alphabet. The first attempt was failed. He rejected the idea of developing the Arabic alphabet, drew up a new Latin alphabet for Azerbaijan, Turkish. Now I will explain these three headings. Um, in 1857, uh, he compiled the new alphabet on the basis of the Arabic one. The new alphabet better reflected the sounds of Azerbaijani Turkish and would be easier for people to learn. He sent the alphabet um, to linguists and orientalists and to the heads of state of Iran and Ottoman Empire and began to campaign for alphabet reform. As part of his campaign, he went to Istanbul in 1863, if I am not mistaken, and uh, presented the project to the Ottoman Prime Minister uh, Fuad Pasha. On the Prime Minister's instructions, uh, the project was discussed in the Ottoman Society of Science though the members of the society appreciated Akundov's initiative, they did nothing to introduce it. Meanwhile, Iran's chief ambassador to the Ottoman courts, Mirza Hussein Khan, worked to scupper the project. He painted a negative picture of Mirza Fatel Akundov uh, in Ottoman society as a hired missionary of Russia, an enemy of the Muslim people and Islam. So, Everyone uh, knew about his Islamic thoughts, philosophical thoughts, and everyone knew that he was a materialist. He didn't accept the God, God's existence. That's what existence. That's why uh, for uh, the uh, Muslimic society, he was uh, like an enemy of the religion. So they couldn't accept. Uh, his alphabet reform. And however, Akhundov did not despair at the failure of his project and did not abandon the idea of alphabet reform. He put greater effort and passion into the idea and developed a second draft uh, of the alphabet. Uh, also on the basis of Arabic, and finally um, he rejected the idea of the developing uh, Arabic alphabet and drew up a new Latin uh, alphabet for Azerbaijan and Turkish. Um, Akundov's interest in European scholarship and culture must have influenced his proposals for an alphabet based on Latin uh, script. So, despite his years of work on alphabet reform, the Latin alphabet was not adopted in Akundov's lifetime. So, it was adopted after his death. Uh, it became reality in the 20th century when it was adopted as the official alphabet of the independent Azerbaijan Republic. So, it was almost a, at the beginning of a, a 20th century. This was confirmation of Mirza Fatale Okhundov's view that Azerbaijan would have to integrate with Europe and the West. So, uh, for the next 
lesson, you uh, will be provided with deceived stars uh, in the PDF version. Of course, if you have um, in the original book, you can read it uh, by uh, original books. But in, in just in case, I will send uh, the book in PDF form, and um, you should. Um, watch this video lesson and I will send you the PPT uh, separate, separately uh, so you will be provided with all of them and please try to think critically and analyze the deceived stars uh, main themes and motifs and if you find the main symbols that are used in the deceived stars you can of course explain it and uh, try to uh, compare the enlightenment in Azerbaijan literature and enlightenment in European literature. So it's your main home task. Uh, so get ready for uh, next week, Wednesday. Uh, we will have a seminar. So just get ready. Thanks for watching my video lesson. And... See you next time.